You're cruising down the highway when you glance at your fuel gauge and realize you're almost out of fuel. You pull into the nearest gas station, but all they have is 87. Should you fill up with that, or is there a better option? What do those numbers even mean? Let's dive in. First off, it's important to understand that gasoline isn't just one uniform type. There's a mix of options out there. In the US, the most common ratings you'll spot are 87, 89, and 92. Other countries might use different values like 91, 95, or 98. Typically, as the numbers go up, so does the price, which can lead some drivers to think they should always opt for the cheaper option. But it's not that simple. These numbers reflect the octane rating of the fuel, which indicates its ability to resist knocking during combustion. Don't worry, I'll explain more about that soon. But first, let's look at how fuel octane affects different engines. Surprisingly, if you own an older car, you might have it easier than you think. Most older models don't really need premium gas. They can run just fine on 87. Essentially, the octane rating gives you insight into how well the fuel works with your engine. For instance, if your owner's manual states that using any type of gas is acceptable, you're in the clear. In everyday driving conditions, there's hardly any difference between 87 and 92 octane. Sure, going with the 92 might help lower your carbon emissions a bit and could marginally improve fuel consumption, but the difference isn't huge. However, if your car's manufacturer specifically recommends using 89 or 92, you need to pay attention. To break it down, 87 is the go-to for most older cars, 89 serves as a mid-grade option great for newer vehicles, and 92 is the premium choice often needed for high-performance or luxury cars. Some mid-range models might also call for premium, so it's worth checking. As I mentioned, if your manual gives you the green light to use any of those options, you have the flexibility to choose. You won't notice any real difference in performance. But if your vehicle's requirements are specific, it's crucial to stick to that advice and avoid any fuel with a lower octane rating than recommended. Let's dive into a topic that's crucial for every driver, that annoying knocking sound your car makes. You know the one I'm talking about, right? That noise happens when your vehicle is using fuel with an octane rating that's just too low. It creates this distinct knock or ping sound and sometimes your car won't even start on the first try. So what's going on here? Essentially, when your engine's fuel mixes with air, a low octane rating can cause that mix to ignite too soon, potentially leading to engine damage. Have you experienced that sound when starting your car? If so, drop a comment below. I'd love to hear your stories. Now, manufacturers often recommend higher octane fuel because many engines are designed to handle more air due to features like supercharging or turbocharging. Additionally, these high performance engines often have a better compression ratio, which amps up the pressure in the cylinders. While this enhances efficiency, it also means that they need higher octane fuel to avoid problems. More air means quicker ignition, and that can lead to premature combustion if you're using low octane fuel. So if you put regular 87 octane gas in a supercharged engine that needs at least 89, you can expect to hear that dreaded knocking sound as soon as you turn the key. But don't worry too much just yet. Using the wrong fuel doesn't immediately ruin your engine you might be able to drive for weeks before any serious issues arise. Plus, modern cars are usually equipped with systems that help minimize the knocking effect, protecting your engine from significant damage. To answer that burning question, yes, if you find yourself stuck on the highway with only 87 octane available, you can use it without immediately wrecking your engine. However, I wouldn't recommend making a habit of it. Over time, the cost of possible repairs will far outweigh any savings from using cheaper gas. Another point to consider is that higher octane fuel tends to be cleaner. Not only will it help keep your car running smoothly, but it also reduces emissions, something we can all agree is important. Now you might be wondering why higher octane fuel comes with a higher price tag, especially if it won't make a difference in cars that run well on 87. The answer is pretty straightforward. It's all about the ingredients. Higher octane fuel is made by adding premium components that are more costly, which naturally raises the overall fuel price. So the more additives they include, the more you're likely to pay at the pump. Buying a high-end car is just the beginning of a long journey filled with service and maintenance costs. Recently, a new set of fuel types has hit the market labeled E10 and E15. The E stands for ethanol, 
While the numbers indicate the percentage of ethanol in the fuel, 10% for E10 and 15% for E15. In the U.S., most gasoline contains up to 10% ethanol, and manufacturers approve its use in their vehicles. E15 is a bit trickier. However, many automakers have designed their cars to accommodate this type as well. Then there's E85, also known as flex fuel, which contains between 51% and 83% ethanol. But here's the thing, only a handful of manufacturers permit its use. Ethanol is considered one of the most efficient additives in gasoline. It boasts a high octane rating of about 109. It's better for the environment, it's renewable, and it helps lessen our reliance on oil. Ethanol is sourced from plants like sugarcane and corn, making its production relatively easy and cost-effective. So, why aren't we all driving ethanol-powered cars yet? It's not that straightforward. For starters, ethanol is about one-third less efficient than pure gasoline. If you can cruise for three hours on 100% gasoline, you'd only get about two hours of driving from 100% ethanol. When you multiply that over days or weeks, the difference becomes stark. Secondly, only the latest car models are compatible with E85, meaning it will take considerable time for widespread adoption across all brands. And let's not overlook the fact that there are still relatively few fueling stations that carry ethanol-based options. Then there's the rising popularity of electric cars, which are proving to be more efficient in terms of emissions compared to those running on ethanol. Electric vehicles might even completely phase out gas and ethanol. Now that we've delved into octane ratings and ethanol fuels, there's a crucial topic we can't ignore, diesel engines. What's the story there? Well, they operate quite differently from gasoline engines. So, what happens if you mistakenly fill your gas-powered car with diesel? Initially, everything seems fine as the engine burns through the remaining gasoline in the tank. Once your car runs out of fuel, it's going to stop abruptly. Why? Well, diesel and gasoline combust differently. What works for one won't do a thing for the other. If you accidentally put diesel in your gas tank, you'll find yourself unable to drive any further. At that point, a tow to the service station is your best bet, where they can drain the tank for you. The good news is that since the engine isn't running, it typically won't sustain any damage internally. Now, if draining doesn't solve the problem, brace yourself for potential repair costs involved with disassembling and reassembling the engine, without any liquid in the tank, of course. On the flip side, if you fill a diesel tank with gasoline, you're in for more serious trouble. Diesel serves as both fuel and a lubricant, which gasoline doesn't offer. While gas engines can't burn diesel, diesel engines can technically run on gasoline. But this isn't a viable solution at all. Gasoline ignites too early, leading to that dreaded knocking sound and causing havoc inside the engine. Plus, without that necessary lubrication from diesel, the fuel injector pump could fail quickly. So, if you make this kind of mistake, get ready to replace some engine parts. The takeaway? When you're at the pump and faced with different fuel options, make the right choice. If you're dealing with diesel, confidently say, fill her up. If you found this information helpful, consider liking the video and sharing it with a friend. And check out these other videos we think you'll enjoy. Just click either side of the screen to keep learning.